Barnaby Bass, an old gentleman who lived alone on the moor, had two sons. John the eldest was a rich man with little principles, and Matthew a poor man with little pride. One day they received notice of their father's untimely death and an invitation to return to Herring House, the sour place of their birth. Around midnight, as they were toasting their father's memory, his ghost appeared. As spirits tend to be, Barnaby Bass was keen on narrating his life story. Born an orphan, he had a natural inclination to run away. Without a coin in his pocket, he made it to the coast and became the cabin boy aboard the Salty Sardine. On that first journey, his ship was attacked by a gang of vicious pirates led by the infamous Chuck Call. Taking pity on the boy's humble condition, the pirate would spare him if he took the three cougars over and joined them on the high seas. Indeed, Chuck and his gang committed all sorts of mischief. After some very successful looting, they were shipwrecked on an uncharted island. The place was so full of snakes that they called it Snake Island. It is there that the pirate hid his great treasure. After months spent on this wretched rock, they lost most of their mates. When finally a ship sailed by, only five of them were still alive, and the great pirate Chuck Card was no more. Naturally, the five castaways never mentioned their true identity, but each kept a tin coin as a reminder of their adventures. They never saw each other again. Yet, the powerful oath they took to return to Snake Island remained eternal. Whoever could unite the five coins would find the way to the greatest treasure ever gathered by a pirate. The modest coin was Barnaby's only legacy to his boys. If they could work together to find the four others, they would accomplish their true destiny. Alone again, the brothers began arguing about their own merits. Each feeling greater than the other, they fought bitterly about who would take command. After searching the house, John found a letter from one of the shipmates. Without a shred of remorse, he took the coin and fled, leaving behind his brother Matthew with nothing but a ghost. After riding to the coast, John found the inn where the old pirate Billy Flounder had spent most of his life. Alas, he was too late. The stable boy confirmed his passing away, but did remember the worthless coin that never left the old sailor. The day he was buried, the priest dropped it in his tomb. That very night, corrupted by dreams of gold, John did not hesitate to commit the unthinkable and rob a dead man. Meanwhile, after finding a dusty old book filled with tales of the Seven Seas, Matthew also made his way to the coast to find the black mackerel and Martin Mullet, the famous pirate who owned it. When the news of John's grave robbing came to the big ears of the law, Captain Guppy was very interested to learn that the suspect was a gentleman inquiring about an old coin. In the coastal town of Old Port, the black mackerel was at Kay. Martin Mullet was taking a hot chocolate break when his second-in-command informed him of the capture of a vagrant who was shuffling about the docks very suspiciously. Matthew introduced himself and exposed his grandiose plan to partner and to sail to Snake Island to claim the treasure. Of course, he was in need of a ship, a crew, and something to drink. Martin Mullet laughed in his face. It was but a legend. There was no Snake Island and no treasure to be found. Thinking on his feet, Matthew demanded that he therefore surrender his useless coin. As Mullet kept on laughing, he even pulled out a gun to strengthen his request. 
The pirate wisely complied and parted with his coin. But little did Matthew know that Martin Mullet was a treacherous man. Also rather treacherous, Captain Guppy held a young woman in his prison. He was not interested in a petty crime of selling trout out of season, but in the coin that she kept around her neck. As he tried to take it from her by force, she picked up a sword to defend herself. After some expert swashbuckling, she managed to escape the grip of her captor. Late that night, in a tavern by the port, Matthew was pondering the folly of stealing from a notorious pirate. About closing time, he had no coin to pay for his drink other than the mullets. The innkeeper was not amused. Thankfully, the young woman offered to settle for him. Introducing herself as Kate, she was curious to examine Matthew's peculiar coin. It is when something magical occurred. A bond of understanding, maybe. Enchanted, Matthew told her of his quest to find Snake Island. Kate offered her help, but in order to gather all the coins, they needed John, and went out looking for him. Indeed, if people search for one another, they are bound to meet at some point. John was thrilled to learn that his brother had just as many coins as he had, but dismayed at sharing with a woman. Even when Matthew told him that Kate was the daughter of one of the five castaways, he would not listen and was rather eager to fight. The law put a stop to that. Captain Guppy had three arrest warrants. Kate for foul fishmongering, John for gruesome grave robbing, and Matthew for not sufficiently shaving. They found themselves sharing a cell with a prisoner who went by the name of Cop. Not a mute at all, he kept blabbering about Snake Island, his precious coin and the treasure map that Guppy had stolen from him. Realizing that the solution was close at hand, the three decided to behave from now on as outlaws and to break out. Lucky for them, Cop knew where the guards kept the explosives. Escaping with the coins in the map, nothing could stop them now. Well, that was not counting with Martin Mullet, who had the men following Matthew all around town. Too happy to rob them of their treasured belongings, he had them locked up below deck. In his cabin, Martin Mullet placed the coins on the map. After all this time, the treasure was his. Following many days of sailing, the black mackerel laid anchor in front of Snake Island. Martin Mullet, a pirate who, like many, likes to gloat, had brought his prisoners around the world just to triumph and to feed them to the sharks. Kate was about to become an appetizer when the red coats appeared on the horizon. The pirates would have to fight and the prisoners could join them or die. All three agreed, they were now true pirates. It was their destiny. Captain Guppy's plan was brilliant as ever. After hearing the story of Chuck Cod from Carp, he could now defeat the pirates in one blow and claim the treasure for himself.
the midst of the battle, Matthew snug below deck and took the coins and the map as John and Kate lowered a small boat to the water. With nobody paying attention, they left the great sea battle and landed on Snake Island. After crossing the thick jungle, they made it to an observation point where an old cannon protected the bay. Matthew fired it by accident and lucky or not, sunk the black mackerel. Further exploration, avoiding deadly quicksands and other perilous traps, they found the old native temple where Chakar had hidden his treasure. Unfortunately, Guppy and his men appeared. They had defeated the pirates and were once again masters of the situation. Suddenly, lightning struck the cryptic symbols to reveal the secret combination. Matthew had closed his eyes and John got all mixed up, but Kate remembered the sequence. When the great stone door opened, there was no treasure inside. All were aghast. John realized that their father must have taken it a long time ago. He just wanted his quarreling sons to unite and walk in his footsteps. Frightfully angered by the setback, Captain Guppy ordered them inside the cave. They deserved a pirate's tomb. As all hope had left our heroes, something rather mysterious happened. The ground began to shake, and as they were holding hands, they were transported to a dark cellar in an old house. Barnaby Bear severed a ghost, thank them for delivering him from Chuck Cod's curse. He would now join the heavens in peace. At that point, the three believed that they were finally wealthy, but just as they wanted to grab the gold, it vanished and returned back to where it came from. Completely unaware of the curse, Guppy received terrible news that his own ship was sinking. He and his men were stranded on the island. That's when the snakes appeared. Back in the old house, our three pirates had a toast to their incredible adventure. Should they give up on the gold? Would they ever manage to touch it? Was this the curse of Chakard? Well, in the end, they did agree that gold was not that important for... Friendship was its own treasure.